Good morning. My name is Bray Bernice. I'm a video technician employed by the Cardamom Group, located at 3633 West MacArthur Boulevard, Santa Ana, California. This is a videotape deposition of Hubert Chich, beginning at 1048 a.m. December 28, 1993. In the matter of Church of Scientology International versus Stephen Fishman and Dr. Yui Duretz. Case number CB 916426HLHTX. Take it at 221 North Figueroa Street, Los Angeles, California. This deposition is handed out to defendants. No introductions, beginning with the witness. Just a moment, Mr. Bernies, would you please state what your instructions were by defense counsel with respect to the video equipment in the next room? So we have a counsel. So we have it clear for the record. He's no reason why I can't have that on. I will tell you what I instructed him to do. No, 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 no. I don't want your representation. I would like counsel. To this with the video operator video is not operator. under oath. He is not a not part of this either. deposition. You're not under oath either. Sorry. I'm an officer of the court. I'll give you a representation of what I told him. All right. Why don't you go ahead first, and then we'll get his version. I advised the court reporters to adopt exactly the same setup as was adopted for the star deposition. Anything else you told him? I don't recall. I didn't tell him Mr. specifically. Barry's, I told his office. Mr. Barry, what were your instructions? I did talk to Mr. Barry. I get instructions. I get a work order to bring three cameras and an extra monitor. And I assume that setup, just like, like Mr. Barry mentioned, the other, the other deposition, just Gar's deposition, a couple months ago, I set up a monitor in the room next door. And the three cameras I set up the same way I did Mr. Gar's deposition. No one instructed me anything. Who was being present in those rooms or how the camera should be set up? That was split screen and one extra monitor. And, and that camera. And that was in accordance with my request to his office. So will you please stop harassing the video operator, Mr. Moxon? I just might add one thing: that the scarf setup was, of course, done uh, by agreement with counsel. Uh, this particular setup was done uh, without any advance notice whatsoever or agreement. Both different. From the plaintiff. The scarf deposition counsel was subject to a court order on videotaping. You may recall that from the magistrate judge, and Judge Huff ordered videotaping at our option. You may also recall that if you don't look at the transcript. Now, Mr. Jensch, what is your full name for the record, please? My name is Heber C. Jensch. And what is your address? 6331 Hollywood Boulevard. And. Uh, are you the president of the Church of Scientology International? Yes. How long have you held that position? Since 1981. <clears throat> now, have you had your deposition taken before? Yes. On how many occasions? Well, I don't remember all the different ones, about four or five times. In what cases? There was a Lavinda Van Shake case out of Boston. Mm -hmm. I had my deposition taken in that case. There was a case with Mr. Mayo in Santa Barbara. Deposition was taken in that case. Um, there was a case with Eli Lilly, which is a current case going, and Hill and Knowlton. And one with Mr. Mitch Daniels, uh, which was taken in, uh, I believe, Arlington, Virginia. Those are the ones I recall. Have you ever testified at trial? Yes, I have. Uh, on how many occasions? Let's see. One occasion. What was the case? That was a case involving uh, the raid which was done by the uh, FBI and the Church of Scientology back in the 70s, about, um, <coughs> say, about 14, 15 years ago. Was it a criminal case you were testifying in? Well, I presume it was a criminal case. Who, who called you uh, as a witness? I believe the government called me as a witness. I don't remember who did. It's been 15 years ago. I couldn't tell you exactly. Who were the defendants? Objection oh, assumes facts and not evidence. Were there any defendants, count, uh, Mr. Gentry? Well, there were defendants. I just don't remember all the names of the defendants at the time. You've got the papers, Mr. Berry. Was Mary you filed Sue, them in this case, haven't you? Was Mary Sue Hubbard a defendant? Mr. Berry, what's the purpose of the question? Was Mary Sue Hubbard a defendant? Mr. Berry, can I please have a proper relevance? My counsel's asking a question. I don't have to give relevance, counsel. Would you please... You refuse? 
proper element of that. Why don't you have the papers? You filed copies of some of the papers in this case. Have you finished your speech, counsel? You refuse to tell us your elements. I am proceeding under Federal Rule of Civil Procedure, <coughs> Rule 26, counsel. Which requires relevance. I don't have to dis explain relevance to you every time I have to ask a question. I if you don't. Support every question, I just ask the relevance. Then I'm not telling you the relevance. I'm proceeding with the question. Who were the defendants? Well, I would assume. Don't assume. Well. No necessity to assume, Mr. Judge. I'll ask you another question, please, Mr. Judge. That's fair, is my assumption. I will get to that in a moment. Was Mary Sue Hubbard one of the defendants? Yes, the answer. Counsel, if you continue to obstruct this deposition, this entire conduct in your part will be placed before the magistrate judge for appropriate orders and appropriate extensions of this deposition. Well, we're, pro we're entitled to ask, I'm sorry, make appropriate objections. But Mr. not obstruct. Barry. Now, well, Mr. Don't Gensh. Don't interrupt with a bunch of speeches. Just go with the deposition. Mr. Gensh, was Mary Sue Hubbard one of the defendants? I never saw the time we get the complaint showing who the defendants were. Who did you understand? What I would, what I would have to answer to would have to be whether I saw the exact names. I was called as a witness, uh, and I testified in that case, and it had to do with um, uh, my perceptions of Freedom of Information Act requests, and that was what I was questioned about. So uh, that's what I recall the particular case. As I say, it was about 15 years ago. And was that in connection with Operation Snow White? There was a um, an order which is shown to me by the uh, by the judge. He asked me to look at this, indicating as he as the judge said in that case that Snow White was an issue of uh, finding the files which governments had collected on the Apollo and making it safe enough for the Apollo to go to the various ports that it was traveling around the world. And as the judge indicated, it did not say anything about any illegality and did not say to commit any illegalities. It was a perfectly legal, constituted document. Have you testified in any other cases? I told you the other cases. Okay. I haven't testified in other cases in court. Not that I, know. Not that I recall. <clears throat> okay. Now, despite having had your deposition taken before, let me give you a few admonitions. Uh, you are having your deposition taken today under oath. It is the same oath that would be given you in a court of law, with the same penalties of perjury attaching there too. I will ask you questions. You will give me answers. Uh, if your counsel objects, that is probably for the sake of the record. Uh, you may nonetheless answer. If he instructs you not to answer, uh, I suggest you follow the instructions of your counsel. We don't wish, wish you to assume uh, or make speculation, but we are entitled to your best guesstimate on certain things. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mr. Berry, best, best guesstimate? I refer you to Mr. Wiener's definition of that for every witness you have taken in this case. Now, is there any reason why you cannot... What is, what is your definition of that, Mr. Wiener? Counsel, Mr. my Mr. definition is not relevant. Will you please stop obstructing this deposition. Now, well, counsel... I just, I just want to get clarified, Mr. Brady. You, in, you gave an instruction to the witness to provide his best guesstimate. I just want to know what you intend... Mr. Moxon, we will deal with that if the issue arises. Now, will you please allow me to proceed with the question of this witness? I've already told you I intend bringing your conduct, conduct before the magistrate judge. This is a further example of it. Now, Mr. Jinch, yes, will you let me... This instruction to add, sir, as to the best guesstimate. All right. I will proceed with this deposition as I see fit, Mr. Moxon. Please so far, you have obstructed me for nearly an hour, or at least 40, 35 minutes. The deposition didn't start until 15 minutes ago. We weren't brought into this room until 10.25. We were waiting downstairs for you, where you were arranged to serve tissues video equipment. Please proceed. Thank you, Counsel. You're not entitled to his guess, as you know. Will you please, Mr. Jensch, uh, um, give us your best uh, recollection of the events? Will you please... Um, if you don't understand a question, uh, tell me so. If you need a break, take a break. Uh, if you need to confer with counsel, you may confer with counsel, but you're not permitted by the rules to confer with counsel while a question is pending. 
and we will we will note we will note that for the record if that occurs is there any reason my counsel clarify that I didn't quite understand that that direction I've not heard that kind of direction before I've always been told by other attorneys that I have a right to consult with my attorney at any time the that there is not a, a caveat that I cannot uh, talk to my attorney. Number Not one, I just and the other thing, uh, sir, I just want to clarify. I've never heard of guesstimate before. I've always been told by judges and told by other attorneys within depositions that uh, the exact uh, answer, if you know, is the answer to give. Not guessing. Um, so I, 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 you know, I understand you want to, you know, proceed, and I want to assist you as much as I. Mr. Uh, I'd like to assist you as much as I possibly can. But those are two things which I've never heard of within the legal. Um, you know, uh, context of uh, the times that I have testified or that I have uh, given depositions. So if you could clarify that with the well, why question my counsel just gave you, then I, that would help me tremendously. When you go back to the offices of OSA or the Office of Special Affairs, why don't you ask Mr. Wiener to pull out all the transcripts in which he has explained to his various witnesses what a guesstimate is. Uh, in Mr. the meantime, Mr. I'm Mr. Not Wiener is not my counsel here. My counsel is Mr. Moxon. It's unnecessary to make uh, sarcastic comments and to make harassing statements to the witness. If you've got instructions, please instruct. We're perfectly entitled to clarify the instructions. You can't instruct him not to consult with counsel, Mr. Perry. We are entitled to, to estimates and approximations, Mr. Gensch. Now, sir, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the We are entitled to estimates and approximations. And let's deal with the issue if it comes up. Now, is there any reason why you cannot give your best test me today? No. Are you under any medication that may uh, impair your recollection of event, events? No. Thank you. What is your residential address? 6331 Hollywood Boulevard, as I give you as my residential address. That's where I'm working all the time. That's really my place of activity. Do you have a separate residential address? Yes, I do, but I couldn't even tell you what it is because I never really looked at it. How do you get home at night, sir? I don't have to look at the numbers. I know where the building is. <laughs> do you live in Berthing or do you live off, off Berthing. base? Off base. Berthing off base. That's correct. In a separate house? In an apartment complex. What is the address of that apartment I complex? I don't really know, but I can find it for you it's later. It's not necessary to produce the witness. I mean, I really don't know the number, frankly, because I don't use any mail there or anything else. I just go there to sleep at night. That's about it. Is it in the same complex as the rest of the uh, Scientology buildings and the old Cedar sinai complex? His personal living address is not necessary. It's a matter of personal privacy. We produce the witness for you. You can produce the trial. Uh, please let us know. Mr. Moxon, I notice you even take... Mr. Barry, please let me finish my objection. We'd be happy to, to produce him as necessary. We don't want him to be harassed at home. We notice that you not only take every witness's residential address, but also their social security numbers, counsel. Now, That's a misrepresentation. Just go on with the deposition, Mr. Berry, no. without making speeches, please. He's the president of the church. We brought him here in an effort to try to give you as much discovery as you might even arguably be entitled to. We didn't bring him here to be harassed by you. I think, counsel, the record will reflect that I'm the only one being har harassed here. Good now, uh, Mr. Jench, which church are you the president of? The Church of Scientology International. As is, we indicated in the Is opening. there more than one Church of Scientology? There's one Church of Scientology International. Is there, are there other churches by the name of Church of Scientology? <laughs> As such, just Church of Scientology per se? I'm, you know, I don't quite are understand you, your question. Are you the there is a Church of Scientology International. I am the president of the Church of Scientology International, which is a specific corporation, which is the mother church. Does that make you head of the Church of Scientology or just the Church of Scientology International? The no, church question. Question. Yeah, well, let's move on. We'll come back to it. Um, who did you speak with before this deposition, regarding this deposition, other than your counsel? Just my counsel. Did you drill for this <clears throat> deposition? No. Did you speak with David Miscavige before this deposition? No. Did you speak with Marty Rathman before this deposition? No. Did you get a session before this deposition? Ever in his life? No. Just before this deposition. Or well, when before? Withdrawn. Did you get a sec check before this deposition? When, Mr. Ferry? Ever in his life? No. Prior to this deposition in relation to this deposition. When, Mr. Ferry? I said Objection. prior to this deposition. Anywhere ever in his life? When? Did you? Today. Have you had sec checks before? Yes, I have. Okay. Have you had a sec check in relation to the material to be covered by this deposition? No. 
Thank you. When the tape is back on. I just want to make sure that I get a copy of any videotape that was made at the beginning of the deposition when it was being monitored in the next room. Was that being recorded? It was recorded. All right. Well, I want to. Camera was on, but it was recorded. So there's no videotape, counsel. And you are entitled to copies of any videotape that are taken here today. All right. I just want to make sure I get copies of any video and any audio tapes that have been made today at all. Since the counsel, you will get what you're entitled to, which is yes. a copy of everything. Mr. Bernice, that's agreed upon? Yes. Thank you. Now, may we proceed? Please. Thank you. Now, having conferred with counsel, will you please read item one to yourself? Is there supposed to be a period at the end of this one here? You have a, a capital at the uh, third line here. What is I'm it? not sure what uh, is that with the, the U? intention of that communication. That is because the capital, the Y on the uh, U is capitalized because it is a defined term, meaning you, Mr. Gench. Capitalized, okay. Is there a question, Ken? I've asked him to read it first and indicate when he's finished reading it. And Mr. Berry, if you're preparing to go through this item by item with Mr. Gench, uh, this uh, doc request has been uh, responded to, as you know, uh, in a timely fashion under Rule 34. And uh, those responses uh, prepared by counsel. Um, and the uh, responses have been made uh, pursuant to the CSI document production uh, over the past uh, several weeks. Well, he was asked to bring documents today, sir. Now, Mr. Mr. Gench? Well, all I'm saying, Mr. Berry, is that that's going to be a fruitless exercise for you to go through every single one of these items to ask him if he's brought documents here today. He has not brought any documents with him today, as he's already testified. I can ask him. I have you. some documents with me, which I intend to produce to you in the afternoon. Uh, which are responsive to, I believe, one of the requests here, which uh, I don't believe have been uh, produced uh, in the course of the CSI re response, uh, which, of course, has been going on practically daily since uh, November the 4th, and over 240 boxes have produ been produced, and up to a half a million documents. That's not correct, and you know it. Mr. Berry, could we please clarify I mean, something? Exactly. You, you made an objection a moment ago that Mr. Gent was represented by personal counsel, and you felt apparently it was improper. I didn't say it was improper. I just... I think it's as cute for, uh, for the representative of the party to also be representing the uh, witness and then have another t attorney here so they can tag team. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's your, permissible within the rules. It's just cute. Was your deposition intended of Mr. Gensch as an individual or as a corporate representative? As a corporate representative. And that's what your document request, obviously, then, was as a corporate representative. Proceed. Now, I intend to have the witness produce all responsive documents prior to the conclusion of his deposition. If you produce them in some other means, buried in some boxes, that is fine, counsel. But we have asked for those documents to be presented here today, and we expect them to be presented here today. Make your record, Mr. Berry, but the documents have been produced. They've been produced once, and that's all that you're entitled to. Well, if you want to spend the day uh, going through this item by item, asking him whether he's going to produce anything, it's a fruitless exercise. Are you now representing that he's not producing any of this stuff and that you have some, no, somewhere in the midst of all these documents that you claim to have produced, produced documents responsive to this request? We have presented to you a response to the request in a timely manner. That is your guideline. The materials okay, have counsel, been produced. Let me give you notice of a motion to compel compliance with this document request in accordance with the rules and not in the accordance with some kind of subterfuge of concealing and dozens of documents so we have to go find documents for this deposition uh, that are responsive to this request. Mr. You Mr. now have notice we... Rule 34 requires us to produce documents in the normal course of business. This is that's what's been done. This council, this, council, this request is directed... Position, would you please? There's no point in arguing that. This request is... Confer later. 
This request is directed at this particular witness. You just indicated he was here only as a corporate representative. I don't know how you, how you, how you want to leave this, Mr. He's, Gray, but would you go ahead with your deposition? We're here and we're wasting everyone's time. To the extent time. he's here as a personal, uh, and to the extent he's here uh, as Heber Gent, he's here in his personal capacity also. Well, well now you've changed it. I don't know, I don't know why he's here then, Mr. Gray. He's here because he was duly noticed. Now, Mr. Gent, let me show you exhibit. Uh, I shall have marked as exhibit three. May I just, for the record, before we go on, Mr. Berry, uh, I noticed you did. You apparently took a, a notice of non-appearance here on the 22nd of November, uh, and that was clearly uh, well after the time that you and I both signed the stipulation to reschedule this deposition it would take uh, for later in the month. I think, uh, I think you, it was off into December. I think you mistake. have been. Uh, apprised of the circumstances of that non-appearance. I don't believe we have until we, today, Mr. Berry. We discussed. what ground you had to make a non-appearance when you stipulated to a different date for the deposition later in time. Counsel. Go ahead, Mr. Berry. I would, ahead. I would suggest that if you think it is more expedient, we have a referee appointed to oversee this deposition. Because I wish you go ahead with your question. You, you refuse to ask any questions. Can you please go ahead with your question? We're here for the question. Now, showing you what I shall have marked as Exhibit 3, do you recognize that as being a transcript of a, of a deposition you gave in the case of Religious Technology Center versus Church of the New Civilization? Usually when uh, these are handed to me, they are marked. Uh, there is a three fire. on the bottom, sir. No, but I mean they are marked uh, by the court reporter, so <laughs> there is no problem with them being uh, confused. Can we do that? Would you please do that, Mr. Report? <coughs> Thank you. Now your question again, sir. Uh, So we're now terminating this deposition again, counsel. No, we're not terminating it. We're just taking a break. Well, may I ask the witness to review this document during the break? Certainly. Okay, yes. Thank you. Well, I merely want to ask, confirm that the testimony you gave on that occasion was true and correct when given. Mr. Barry, I have now verified that your conduct this morning is a violation of California penal statute, uh, illegal electronic surveillance. Moreover, when we asked what that camera was for, it was misrepresented to us by you and by your agent operating the camera. Uh, what it was for, it was misrepresented to us entirely. You lied to us about it to hide your criminal conduct, and you lied to us about it so that you could continue your criminal conduct during the deposition of this illegal electronic surveillance with uh, Mr. Young sitting in the next room. Uh, you indicated that you would fix it, and I went back in the room after one of our discussions and found that the, the lines had been switched so that the monitor in the next room was no longer monitoring the third camera behind us, but was now monitoring the camera directly on Mr. Gentry's face. Uh, and it was only when I complained about that 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 was removed. You've been harassing Mr. Gentry throughout this deposition, asking him questions about his personal religious beliefs, about his, uh, his auditing, his sessions, you know, whether or not he's acting. I am very, very concerned uh, about your criminal conduct and about that of your agents. The uh, court reporter also indicated that he knew that camera was back there, that that monitor was back there. We are now terminating the deposition pursuant to Rule 30D. We will be seeking a protective order as to the discovery in this case and as to your, uh, your personal misconduct. Of course, we'll file a bar complaint, which will not be part of this action per se. But at this point, we're terminating the deposition pursuant to Rule 30D, and we intend to get down to the court today. I'm going to seek a hearing today before Magistrate DeSopolis. If she will hear us, uh, we will be heard. I'm giving notice of that. If Magistrate DeSopolis is unavailable, I will seek a hearing before Judge Hupp. If you will hear us, then we'll uh, attempt to be heard today. Counsel, all your allegations are denied, and let me tell you that one of my associates has already spoken to the clerk for the Magistrate. We are advised by the clerk that Magistrate DeSopolis is not available 
to instruct or advise the parties telephonically. If she is forced, if we are forced uh, into a situation, we can move ex parte to shorten time with regard to a motion to allow Mr. Young to be present. Uh, we are to advise you, sir, that their position had better be well taken because Magistrate Tosopoulos will impose sanctions if A, she's, a fo she's forced to hear a motion on shortened time, and B, if CSI's position is not, is weak or untenable. Thank you. I'll contact Magistrate Tosopoulos myself to see if we can have a hearing on your criminal conduct. And, Council, I refer you to Magistrate Tosopoulos' uh, guidelines in this case and your constant characterization of criminal conduct. I will not refer to your own role in the Mary Sue Hubbard case. Typical. Apparently, Mr. We'll Bench, this deposition soon. is terminated. Uh, suspended for Rule 32. We will seek sanctions, Mr. Moxon. Uh, we are now off the record. Sorry. Uh, no, the, the, before we go off the record, I would like to see if I can get copies of these tapes, both audio and video, right away. Can you make copies of them with the equipment we can, now? We can. Yes, now, this, this deposition is Thank suspended uh, unilaterally by counsel for the plaintiff pursuant to 30D. It will be continued pursuant to court order. Off the record. Off the record, the date is 728, 1993, the time is 12.01 p.m. To the table one, the continuing deposition, Mr. Jett. 